If you've seen my videos, you know that I never recommend buying a Pro Evo PC under $600. Well, it's time to move that budget to $500 instead because there's a new deal that actually doesn't suck. Anyway, you still need to be careful when shopping Pro Evo PCs at this price point. Getting a scam here, it's easy. With that being said, if you have a budget below 5 with, go ahead and get a console. You will get a much better gaming experience for the price. And now let's talk about this PC. You will have the link for this one down below in the video description, alongside a PC build for around the same price and a bunch of private PCs for different budgets in case you have more or less money than 5 with dollars. Now let's start. First, we are going to discuss the specifications and don't worry about it if you don't know anything about computers, I will explain what you can expect out of this PC in terms of gaming performance. This is the HP Pavilion gaming desktop from Amazon and it's worth to say that there is only one left in stock, so I don't know if you're watching this video and it's out of stock, just wait until it's back in stock. Now this PC has the Ryzen 5 56 sandwich G and the RX 55 sandwich alongside 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of NVMe SSD. Now, we all know the Ryzen 5 5600 g it's a really good CPU even for gaming. We are talking about a 6 core 12 thread processor with integrated graphics, but of course we won't use this integrated graphics, we will use the RX 5500. This GPU is not the flashiest, is of course not the best, and if we expect it to run the latest AAA titles at ultra settings 1440p, this is not going to happen. This GPU is designed for 1080p gaming, 60 plus FPS on average, of course depending on the game and the settings, and I'm going to tell you what performance you can expect out of this gaming PC, but before doing that I do recommend you upgrading the RAM to 16 gigs if you want a better performance. You can expect to run Fortnite at 120 FPS on average, without any upgrades, we are talking about 8 gigs of RAM. Then you can expect to run games like GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2 at 60 plus FPS on average on medium to low settings. So this PC is designed for esports titles such as Battleground, Fortnite, Rainbow, Apex Legends, CSGO, those games you will be able to run without any issues, even at high FPS, especially if you upgrade the RAM. And then for AAA titles, it really depends on the game and the settings that you want to play at. But if you really want to play these games on ultra settings, then I do not recommend you buying this PC or any PC at this price point. If you want to play those type of games, I do recommend you spending around $800 for a 1080p ultra settings AAA titles PC. Now we are going to compare it with a PC build for the same price. Like I mentioned at the beginning, you will have this PC build down below in the description as well. So for a bit more, for 546 bucks, you can get a gaming desktop with the i3 10100F. This is a worse CPU than the Ryzen 5 56 sandwich G, but then you get 16 gigs of RAM at 3200 MHz, 500 gigs of NVMe SSD, and most importantly, a GTX 1660. So at the end, in terms of gaming performance, this one will be better than the HP Pavilion one. And it's also going to be more upgradable, which is important. And you will have 60 gigs of RAM and 500 gigs of SSD already, so you don't need to touch anything on this PC build. But of course, you have to build it yourself, which you may not want to do. And the other thing is that you can get this price back to $500 with a better GPU if you buy it from the used market. I do recommend you going with the RX 56 Sangrid XT. That one is going to give you a better performance than the 1660 at a lower price, but of course you're buying from the used market. So if you want something brand new, I think the GTX 1660 is the best bet at this price point. Of course, I do recommend you going for something better for not that much more, but if you're working on a really tight budget, I think that the 1660 is going to get the job done at 1080p. And at the end of the day, it's a much better GPU than the RX 5500. So my point is, building it yourself is going to be better for multiple reasons, but if you don't want to build it yourself, I think that the HP Pavilion is a really good PC for the price and for beginners. Now, if we compare it with other private PCs at the same price or a similar price, the other PCs are a complete scam and please do not buy these type of computers. We are taking a look for example at the Alarco gaming desktop with the i7, it doesn't specify the model because it's really old and this is how they market this PC because they put an i7 and everyone that doesn't know anything about computers is going to assume that just by having an i7 you're having a beast of a PC and that is not the case and then you get the GTX 750. If you see any gaming desktop with a GTX 750, do not buy. It's not going to be good for gaming nowadays, just don't buy it. 
Then if we take a look at another PC that's called the Black Matrix Gaming Desktop, this one has the i5 25 fan width. This is a really really old CPU. You get 8 gigs of RAM of DDR3 and a GTX 750 once again for a higher price than the HP Pavilion. Once again, do not buy any gaming system with this graphics card. And then we have another gaming PC that has really good ratings and it's the mini gaming PC with a Ryzen 5 56 MB GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, 500 gigs of SSD but you're using in a greater graphics, so you won't get a better gaming performance. I actually don't hate this mini gaming PC, but at $500 is a really high price and I wouldn't buy it. So now let's discuss the pros and cons. For the pros, we have that this is a good price to performance gaming desktop considering the price. Then we have that it's easy to use, you just plug and play, of course remember to install the drivers. I never say this and a lot of people have reached to me saying that they don't achieve the FPS that they want and that's because they don't have the drivers installed. Then another pro is the price, this is a cheap gaming PC and the last pro is that it has better performance than any other private PC at the same price or similar. And then for the cons, we have that it only has one stick of 8 gigs of RAM. Like I said before, I recommend you upgrade this as soon as possible. And the other con is that it's not fully upgradable aside from the RAM, the storage, and GPU in some cases. So if you want to upgrade the CPU, the motherboard, or the case, do not try to upgrade. Of course, you can move the components to another case, except from the motherboard and the power supply. So what is the conclusion? Well, it's a pretty decent PC for beginners. Don't expect to run the latest AAA titles at ultra settings like I said before, but to play popular old time games at 1080p 60 plus FPS will be enough. Of course, depending on the settings and the type of game. Although if you can extend your budget a bit more, you can get a much better gaming performance with other systems. That's why I highly recommend you watching my top five budget private PCs of the month located in the cards in the top right of the screen or like I mentioned before taking a look at the different PCs for different budgets down below in the description and I upload not only videos but also posts on my YouTube feed so if you want to get notified for those posts subscribe but most importantly hit that bell button because in those posts I upload the best daily deals that I can find on the market so if you want to find the best product PC deal or PC components deal definitely hit that bell button Thank you guys for watching, thank you for your support and I will see you on the next one.